Sometimes animation doesn't need a trigger. It just needs rhythm and flow. The loop effect in Framer is perfect for things like pulsing indicators, moving backgrounds, or attention-grabbing icons. In this lesson, I'll show you how to set up a looping animation and make it feel just right. For this one, we're gonna jump into the same project file that we used for the previous couple of lessons, this animation effects project. But we're gonna head down here to the loop example. And in this loop example, we've got two little slider handles and we wanna animate them so that they automatically slide back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, both of them in opposite directions, sort of bringing this icon to life. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna start with the first handle and I'm gonna head down to effects and this time I'm going to add the loop effect. And much like the hover and press effects that we learned about before, we get a modal where we can determine how we wanna transform this layer. And because it's a loop effect, that can either happen over and over again from beginning to end in loop mode, or it can happen from beginning to end and then from end back to beginning in mirror mode, which is exactly what we want. We want this dot on the right to move itself to the left and then reverse that and move back to the right. So we want the mirror effect here. We don't want any delay yet because we want to see what this looks like with no delay and then we'll dial that in as needed. But what I do want to do for sure is offset the position of this layer. And this can be a positive number to go to the right or a negative number to go to the left. I'm going to set a negative number and I'm going to go way to the left here until this lines up with the other handle below it, which ends up being an offset of about negative 110 pixels. By default, it also gave us this rotate value because by default, it's gonna create a looping 360 degree rotation animation. I don't want that. So I'm gonna zero out the rotation. We don't need that. We wouldn't even be able to see it with just a white circle spinning around. So just the offset, that's all we need. And then down here, because this loop animation is gonna happen on its own, it's gonna start on its own and it's gonna keep going forever, we could decide whether or not we want the browser to continue playing it even when we can't see it because the viewer scrolled past it or the viewer hasn't scrolled down to it yet, or we can have it pause to save resources in the browser. I'm gonna keep this on pause to keep our page from getting too resource intensive as we add more and more animations. And then before I set a transition, let's actually preview this. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see if we're even on the right track. And there we got something going on. We have the slider going from right to left. We have it going from its starting position to its transformed position that we set in that modal. But we've got a linear easing curve here that makes this motion look very robotic. It's instantaneously starting, instantaneously stopping. So let's make that look a bit more natural. We'll head back to the modal here for the effect. We'll go to the transition. And rather than being linear, let's start by changing that to ease in and out. So that way it gets moving slowly and it sort of comes to rest a bit slowly. And that's gonna happen in both directions because we've got this mirrored. So it's going to be even both ways. Whatever we set here is going to happen again backwards. So I'll hit Command P again on my Mac to go into preview mode. And now that's looking a bit more natural. At least it's not instantaneous. We've got that energy being slowly transferred in and out. Definitely looks a bit more natural. But I'm gonna go back and let's make it a little more playful. Let's give it a bit more character. I'm gonna go to spring. I'm gonna do this based on physics and I'm gonna make this a bit less stiff and I'm going to increase the mass so that way it gets going a bit gradually and then it has enough energy to sort of wiggle its way to rest. And we can also remove some of the damping here so that it kind of wobbles to rest a bit more dramatically here. And I can click the preview to show you what that's gonna look like. And the preview is highly applicable here since we're animating a slider and the preview is a slider itself. So we're getting a really good sense of what that's gonna look like. So let's preview it again, see if we're happy with the first one. And if we are, yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Maybe we want a little delay in the middle. Maybe we want it to rest for a moment before it ping pongs back and forth. So let's go back to the loop and let's add a very small delay here. I'm just gonna do half a second, 0 0.5. And we'll preview this again. Okay, so that delay is a little long for my taste. So I'm gonna go back and just cut this down to 0.2. And we'll say that's probably a happy medium. And now we want to apply that same animation, but going the opposite direction to the other handle. 
So rather than reinventing the wheel here, what I'm going to do is with this first one selected, I'm going to right click on the loop effect on the properties panel, and I'm going to press copy. Then I'm going to come over to the second handle here, select it, head over to effects, right click, and I'm going to choose paste. Now, the problem is that I had the first one animating to the left and then coming back to the right, which means this one is going to animate to the left and then come back to the right. But we really wanted to do exactly the opposite of that. So when I click on the effect modal to bring it back up, you can see that that transformation is just pushing this even further to the left. Definitely don't want that. So the opposite of moving it negative 110 pixels is moving it positive 110 pixels. So that should be enough to do the trick. And we've got the same delay, the same easing, because we copied and pasted this from the other one. So we should have a perfect reciprocal animation between the two. And if I now go into preview mode and scroll down, watch what happens here. We've got our loop starting, and then the second one is a little bit off in timing. That is because we had this animation paused. We had both of these animations paused until they came into view. So since the first one came into view first, it started first. Second one came into view later, started later. So now they're not synced up with one another. So to resolve that, we can make a small performance concession here, and we can say that we want this to continue playing while it's off screen. And when I preview again, I'll scroll down extra slow to exaggerate what caused the problem originally. And you can see that these are now perfectly in sync with one another. And there you have it. Looping animations are a great way to add motion without needing any interaction. This is a fun one, but as with most things, don't go too nuts. Motion should support your content, not distract from it. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.